Pray to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I greet our brethren who are here present with us, as well as the ones who are watching us, participating through YouTube, the brethren in Jacksonville, Pastor Veraldo, Pastor Ramon, Pastor Pirajara, the brethren from the Church of Orlando, and the remain who are watching with us the service with the grace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite the church to stand up this moment. We're going to open the Word of God in the book, 2 Kings, 2 Kings, the Old Testament, chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verse 10. Thus says the word of our God. Então Eliseu lhe mandou um mensageiro dizendo: Vai, lava-te sete vezes no Jordão, e a tua carne será curada e, fi e ficarás purificado. Adoramos Santo. Lord, we praise the holy name for this moment of fellowship. You know, and that we ask that your word may operate and act in our midst and to our benefit, healing, saving, delivering, and manifesting your, your grace and your glory. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The text speaks to us about a man. And what is interesting is that it doesn't not only speak about the name of this name, uh, the name of this name, the name of this man, the Lord registered, uh, left here, registered his curriculum. He had a curriculum, and the Bible says that this man called Naaman, he was chief of the army of Syria, of the king of Syria. He was uh, a powerful man, a man that was very well respected, because through this man, God had given deliverance to the Syrian Empire. This man was a man of valor. It was the curriculum of this man. He lived in Syria and at the time the capital was Damascus and Damascus was a city that was we can say it was a very blessed city. It was a large city, a prosperous city, a city which was rich in culture and knowledge and, and Syria was, uh, was part of Mesopotamia and it was the, the, the big birthplace of civilization, writing, culture, system of irrigation and navigation all started there. So he lived in a country that we could say very productive, country that at the time Everybody would want to reside and live there. So he lived there, and that place had two very well known rivers. The lower parts of this river, the valley of this river, was known as the Garden of Allah. Uh, so beautiful it was. Apollo Farpa, uh, the name of the rivers. And also in Syria, there were many gods because it was a nation polytheist. They have many gods. And Naaman himself, he made sacrifices and holocausts to his gods and goddesses. And we can even think, Naaman, he was in a very privileged position and pleasant. He had a good curriculum. He lived in a, a good country, a beautiful city, two rivers with crystal clear waters, pure waters, a very fertile place, 
a place with a lot of culture and knowledge. But the Bible says that this man, he was, he was had leprosy. So we know that we realize that the culture, the medicine, the art, and science, his curriculum, the king that he had, the gods that he had, the rivers that he was, that he had access to, they were not enough to heal this man of his illness. So the resources that he disposed of in Syria, they were not enough for him to be able to have once again health and have him life again. Because he was a leper and his days were numbered towards his death. And the Bible says that, however, the Bible says that in those days he came back from a battle in Israel and brought from Israel a little, a young lady. The Bible doesn't even mention her name. She didn't have a curriculum. It was a young lady that went to live and reside and live and, and was went there to work for the wife of Naaman. This month, we spent the month working for our co-workers so that God may use our lives, so that God might rescue our co-workers. So this girl was in that house, and the Bible says that she was taken captive, she was taken as a prisoner. She did not ask to be there, but she was forced to be in that place. But in spite of all of this, this young lady, she gave a good testimony of the God of her life. And Jesus says, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But even after that, Jesus says himself, and you will be witnesses of me. So this young lady, she not only preached, but she also testified in Syria, in the house of Naaman, about the God, regarding the God that she knew. The Bible says that we should never stop talking about what we have seen and heard. So she spoke about what she saw and heard. She, what she, she testified of the power of God to that family, to that home, to her lords. And the Bible says the following that that young lady said, Oh, I wish that my Lord Naaman could have come and present himself in front of the prophet who is in Samaria. And that young lady, that word, that truth that she said at, in that place at that moment, brought hope to that man, caused that man to get up and go to his Lord and to testify now to his Lord what that young lady had told him. Because this young lady, she gave to him a revelation. This was a prophetic act of God for the life of that man. So when look in the book of Job, it says, if you, if you, if there is a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among thousands to declare a man to his righteousness, then he shall have mercy of them, and you will tell him, deliver them, to that may not go to the tomb, and that he may be rescued, and his flesh will go green again, better than when he was a baby. And it is in the book of Job, if there was a messenger interpreted somebody to declare to men and that girl she was a messenger from God she was somebody that was used by God to declare to that family to that house to that place that there was for him a cure that was for him a rescue and the Bible says that the flesh would go back to be as tender as when they were young and we will see here 
that that's exactly what happened with the life of Naaman. He had a life that was transformed. So that the girl, she said those things, and he goes to the to the king, and the king of Syria also believed in the girl. The girl spoke to the wife of Naaman, and the wife of Naaman believed. The wife of Naaman said to Naaman, Naaman believed. And Naaman spoke to the king, and the king believed. They all believed with the testimony of that young lady. And you shall be my witnesses. The Lord used that young lady, and has used today our lives to testify of this wonderful God, this almighty God, this God who created heaven and earth, this God, God of the impossible. So when he goes to the king and he says, the young lady, she's from Israel. The one who spoke to me was a girl from Israel. Why Israel? Because the true God is the God of Israel. Why Israel? Because Israel is the land of promise. And the Lord has made a promise to us of a new heaven and a new earth. She was in Syria, but she was not Syrian. She could have been in Brazil, but she's not Brazilian. She could have been in America, but she's not American. You know what the Lord says? My kingdom is not of this world. You are not of this world. I have a land, a nation is this new heaven, this new earth, is the eternity with the Lord. Young, Lord, uh, young lady from Israel, <coughs> the people of God. That was the message that she brought for my life. The servant of God has this message. The message of the land of Israel. The message of a new heaven and a, of a new earth of an eternity prepared for the ones who love him. And the Lord then said, the word says that the king, he sends, he says, go and walk. So interesting this, right? He asked him to go and walk. So now the words, Naaman, enter into the enter on the way, seeking a healing for his life, for his need. So when he leaves Syria, he leaves Syria, the Bible says, with gold, silver, garments, carts, and horses. He left that place and went to Israel. It was very common those days when a man presented before a, a, a seer before a priest or a prophet to bring gifts. That's why he prepared uh, all this stuff. He prepared garments, clothing, but the gold that he possessed, the dress that he possessed, the house that he possessed, the horses, the man, they could not place him before God. The resources that he had, they were insufficient for him to present before the man of God. So the word says that he goes, so he comes close to the house of the man of God. Firstly, he went astray because he wanted to hear the advice of his king, the king of Israel. He said, go there and seek the king of Israel. He has authority. Sometimes we receive advices. The Lord asks us to use the servant of God to give us an advice, give us a direction. He says, seek the prophet, seek the man of God, and your situation will be resolved. And many times man don't, doesn't do this. He seeks a representative. He seeks a man. We go to, to that church and there I'm going to look for a pastor. I'm going to seek the bishop or a missionary. I'm seek a, a politician. I'm going to seek the president. I'm going to seek the king. 
what the young lady said. The servant of God said that in order for him to be saved, to be healed, he did not need to go to the king or to men. He needed to go to God. So when he realized and when he goes to the presence of the king of Israel, he, the king of Israel rips his garments and he says, Am I God? So that's very interesting. The king of Israel recognized I'm a king, but I have no power to do this. Medicine cannot resolve it. The authorities cannot resolve it. The kings cannot resolve this. And I also cannot resolve this. So if, if you, my brother and sister, if you came today to the house of the Lord, seeking a resort for your life in men, I'm going to tell you something. We cannot resolve your problem. We have no power or authority to purify men of leprosy or to forgive their sins. Not even my own sins. That's why he rips his garments. He says, I'm a man. He's showing that he's a man. The Bible says, the Bible says, curse is the man who trusts in man. So every time that we trust in man, we are cursed. Doesn't matter if he's a king or a priest and if he's this or that. Because man has no power or authority to act you know, on your life, on your behalf, and to your benefit. To rescue you, to rescue, to save you, to transform you. So he leaves that place from the presence of the king and then he goes to the house of the man of God thinking that his curriculum that what he had that he possessed he could present before God present himself before God but that's not how it works our resources are they run out man cannot present before God with sin, with the, the sin of leprosy. So then he came to the house of the man of God. Is this the house of God? Yes or no? No, no. This is not God's house. But here is the door of the house of God. Who is the door of the house of God? Jesus and the house of God is where is in third heaven is in eternity so he came to the door of the house of the man of God you my brother and sister we are at the door of the house of the man of God he was not received by the man of God he was received by the messenger who is the messenger of the man of God who is the messenger of God is the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes to convince men of sin and judgment and sin the Lord has a word for men so that if man accepts the Lord his life will be transformed what is the theme of this year who has an ear, listen what the Spirit is saying to the church and what the Holy Spirit is saying to the to this church today at this exact moment. Wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. That was the word of the man of God to Naaman. Wash yourself seven times on the Jordan River. So then he shows to him what he needed to do in order for his life to be restored. Wash himself seven times. What is the meaning of this? It shows salvation as an act as, and also as a process. When we go to Revelation, it says, who are they, those, where they came from? Those are the ones who washed their garments, watered them out in the blood of the Lamb. So he needed to wash himself on the Jordan River. Why Jordan River? Because the Jordan River 
was a river where the people of God crossed in order to inherit the promised land. In the time of Joshua, the Jordan River was the river that Elisha and Elijah crossed in order for Elijah to be uh, wrapped in the royal wind. The Jordan River was the river where Jesus was baptized, where John the Baptist was there to baptize people for the, so that they could uh, repent of their sin. Is the word of God, is Jesus, is the blood of Jesus that washes and purifies us of all our sins. It was the Jordan River. He had to go down. The Jordan River speaks about, uh, means the ones who goes down. So he needed to go down. Jesus left his plan of his glory in order to bring to you and to us a project of salvation, a project of eternity. The man needs to go down and recognize God as his God, as his Savior, as his, his Savior. And to that moment, Naaman had not understood that. He did not want to be saved. Naaman didn't want to be healed. So when he goes, he says, I wished that he presented himself in front of me, that he touched me, and he called upon his God so that his God could have healed me. So that was the mindset, or his understanding, because that's how he was in Syria. He was used to the, the services in Syria. It was like this when they would present themselves and they put their hands and, and pray for someone. And, but none of this happened. He did not need that. What he needed was to obey the plan and the project of God for his life, which was not how he wanted, but he, it was according to God had determined, determined. So the word says, my brother, that he opposed to this, but another employee, and that's interesting, the Lord was using his employees in order to save his, his boss. One of the servants said, hey, if they asked you for something great, would you not have done? If they asked for a great holocaust, a great sacrifice, if they asked for a great amount of money, would you not have given it? And don't people would give, would not people give a large amount of money or would may have made a great sacrifice in order to be healed? But God does not need a sacrifice. It does not in a holocaust. It does not need a great amount of money. You know why? Because salvation is priceless. Salvation is free because through grace you are saved. It does not come from, from you. It's a gift of God. It does not come from works. It's not from your curriculum. But it comes for the recognition that God is the only one that can change and transform our lives. So then the word of God says that he washed himself seven times and he was purified of his leprosy. He was forgiven. All his sins were forgiven. That's it. He did not need to pay anything. He did not need to make any effort or sacrifice. You know why? Because the price had already been paid. The sacrifice had already been accepted by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the cross of Calvary for love for mine, for yours, for all our lives. The only thing that he needed to do is was to obey what God had, de had determined for his life. So the word of uh, God says that Elisha sent a messenger. The messenger said, go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. And then he went, washed himself, and now he returns. He go, comes back. He comes back because now he had recognized the power of God in his life. He comes back and now he presents himself before the man of God. He was no longer before the messenger. He was now before the, the man of God. Why is that? Because now his sins have been forgiven. The Bible says that without sanctification, no one will be able to see God. But now that he had been sanctified by the precious blood of Jesus, was now able to present himself and be in the presence of God. 
That's how it is with us as well. When we accept the sacrifice of Jesus in our lives, when we wash ourselves and purify uh, uh, our sins through the blood of Jesus, now we have access to the Father, access to the presence of God. You know, to say to God that that's what he did. He went there to testify to God. And he said, now I recognize there is no other God other than in Israel. Amen. So this project of God for that man was not only to heal him, but also to save him because of the desire of God that all may be saved and have the knowledge of the truth. And he said the following. So then Elisha sent a message saying, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan River, and your flesh will be restored. That's the desire of the Lord. That you leave tonight purified, purified by the blood of Jesus, and leave this place with your sins forgiven, and leave this place knowing, saying that only the Lord is God, only Jesus is God. He is the one who washed you, purified you, and sanctified you, and has forgiven you of, of all your sins. We need to leave this place saying that there is no other God than the God of Israel, the Lord, the God who has created heaven and earth. Amen. Let's hear a song.
Elevator. Oh, to God. What is your name, God? Hallelujah. The Lord was showing a man that participated in the service yesterday. And today is here, once again participating. And the Lord has shown that yesterday he heard a message about the absolute truth. And this has caused him to have a desire to know more of this truth. This truth is Jesus. I'm the, the way, the truth, and the life. He is the absolute truth. No one goes to the Father but through me. He is the only one who has power to forgive sins. He is the only one who has the power to transform man's life. He is the only one who is going to come to take his church, his faithful church. If you believe, you see the product of God being fulfilled in our life. And he has, the word, the Lord has shown that he has cuffs. He was shackled and, and it has prevented him from, and this weight that has caused him uh, to not to be able to walk or the austerity in the presence of God. It is attached. It is uh, symbolized that he is attached to religion. Religion does not save. Christ saves. Denomination does not save. Christ saves. No man has the power to save, but Christ he saves man. He delivers man. He transforms man's life. He is the way. If if someone if man follow this way, he will get to eternity. Many times we are attached and we are imprisoned to a denomination, to the religion, and that prevented us prevents them from walk in a steady way in the presence of God. But today the Lord was showing that he was removed the shackles to allow him to walk freely in the presence of the Lord. The Lord also has shown that during the period when which the children were singing a song, the sun of righteousness will go up and it was showing a land. The heart of man was dark. But as soon as the song was sang, the sun of righteousness was Jesus, it would shine upon our hearts. Jesus is the one that takes man out of darkness in order and brings him to light. And that's what he's doing to us tonight. The Lord also has shown a woman, she was invited. She was able to observe that her garments were not according to what the other people was, were wearing here in this place. And she, she was feeling like she was feeling that she was improperly uh, dressed. And she was even feeling like she wanted to leave this place because of this. But the Lord was showing that the person that invited you, who is the Holy Spirit of God, was replacing the garments of this woman and was giving her a place so that she could be with us praising and glorifying the name of God. Our garments, they are inadequate. But the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, He has the garments of salvation to give to each one of us. You just need to do like you did, my sister. Recognize that your garments are inappropriate and so that you can receive the garments of praise instead of a uh, anguished soul eyes of joy instead of tears. That's what the Lord is doing to you. Replace your garments so that you can participate in this feast. The, the wedding of the Lamb that is being prepared for His people and for His church. I invite the church to stand up. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we glorify your holy name for your acts of righteousness we feel your whole real presence, your mercy. We praise because we have operated every day in our place. We praise the holy name. We we'll glorify for your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that song, right? Is that the song? Amen. So let's sing that song.
Hello, Dennis. Praise the Father, glorify you. We are thankful for your grace, your mercy, your favor, salvation, deliverance, fellowship, sustenance, deliverance, for your word, Lord. Yes. Every day, be fulfilled in our midst. Bless be your name for the service, for the people who are here with us in presence and also connected. Your people in Orlando, in Jacksonville, your servants now, they are in fellowship with you. We ask that you may be operating, act, acting on the behalf, on the benefit, and that your word may, may heal, deliver, save, opening doors, and transform, and to give, Lord, great experiences with you, Lord. Give us a blessed week in your presence. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. In your name we say that the grace of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, the love of, of our eternal Father, and the sweetness and the consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. I say goodbye to the brethren who are connected with us, with the people of the Lord Jesus, and remind the church that from this day forward, we are on the month for our neighbors. Right? Month for the neighbors. We have the oil. And the Lord wants uh, us to ask for the vessels that pour the vessels so that we may fill the vessels with oil. That's the role of the church to carry the blessing of the Lord to our neighbors. First week is early dawn, second as week as usual, consecration from zero to nine or from five until the end of the uh, to eight, and, and to nine actually. The third that we have uh, a meeting on Zoom, uh, AB uh, Sunday School Study. On Thursday, we have prayer service at 8 p.m. here. And Saturday, early dawn at 6 o'clock in the morning. At 6 in the afternoon, women's service here in the church. And 7.30, we have a service here. And every Sunday morning, we have uh, Sunday service at 10 o'clock. And it's every day, 7.30, we have another service here. And you, my brother and sister, you who are here with us tonight, if you desire prayer, clarification regarding the word and the message that was shared here, I wish everyone, just raise your hand, so I wish everyone the peace of the Lord. It's still raining. A lot of rain, a lot of wind. So, as you go home, go with in a prudent fashion. Amen. I wish everyone the peace of the Lord.